As I'm recording this, for the last few days, we have been enjoying some incredible displays of the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. A powerful solar storm has meant they have been visible much further south than normal. I managed to see them on the south coast of England and took some photos that I never expected to be possible without traveling much, much further north. This one even looks like it caught a small shooting star in it too, which is pretty cool. However, despite the fact that these things are absolutely stunning and it was super exciting to see them in places that don't normally get treated to these colorful light shows, there is at least one slightly concerning aspect to them, at least for people like me. You see, at my day job, I work on the Euclid Space Telescope, and space telescopes do not find the aurora as beautiful as we do. They do not enjoy being pelted with the radiation that causes the lights here on Earth. The aurora, both the southern and northern lights, are caused when the sun throws off particles during solar storms. This is activity on the surface of the sun that sends huge clouds of particles out into space. If these are sent out in the direction of Earth, some get deflected away from us, but many of these electrically charged particles interact with the Earth's magnetic field. The particles get sort of funneled towards the north and south poles by the magnetic field. Hence, we get the lights brightest at the north and south poles. The lights and the colors are then caused by the charged particles smashing into the Earth's atmosphere and interacting with particles in the atmosphere. This essentially heats up the particles and they emit light as they heat up, just like anything does. Without our magnetic field, our atmosphere actually would have been stripped off long ago and lost into space due to these solar storms pummeling it non-stop. Solar activity ramps up and down on an 11-year cycle, and we're currently just about to peak in 2024, so the sun is at its most active, hence why we're seeing these extreme lights. We often measure solar activity by the number of visible sunspots, as these show areas of lots of activity. During these intense aurora we've just been seeing, there was an enormous sunspot, 17 times larger than the diameter of the Earth, pointing pretty much straight at us. It was so big that with eclipse glasses to do so safely, you could see it with the naked eye as a dark mark on the sun. Here's a photo I took with just my phone through some eclipse glasses. Sure, it's blurry, but the sunspot is definitely visible. This resulted in massive solar ejections, millions and millions of particles traveling over 90 million miles at a million miles per hour, just to smash into our atmosphere and give us a stunning light show. So these things are violent, but beautiful. But what does any of this have to do with our space telescopes? There are a couple of reasons that these aurora affect telescopes, and none of them are good. It's not that the bright lights are blinding the telescopes or ruining the images they're trying to take. That's not the problem. The telescopes I'm mainly thinking about here, such as JWST and the Euclid Space Telescope, live over a million miles from the Earth. And so they don't ever see the aurora themselves, as they never point at the Earth. That means, sadly, we'll never get to see images of the northern or southern lights from these great observatories. That's because if they tried, the sun, earth, moon, and aurora would all be so hot and bright to them that it would fry all of the sensitive detectors on board and completely break the telescopes. So we're not even gonna try that one. They're designed for detecting the faintest light possible, coming from the distant universe. So pointing them back at us or at the sun is a very bad idea. The issue I'm talking about here actually goes right back to the cause of the aurora the energetic charged particles coming from the sun. Plenty of these particles zoom straight past the Earth and they reach the telescopes, smashing into them, having a pretty big impact. The radiation, along with protons that comes along too, can often pass straight through the shielding on the telescopes and hits the detectors on board. These are very sensitive instruments and being blasted by excess radiation over time slowly degrades their ability to detect the faint light they're looking for in the distant universe. Now, it's not going to completely disable the telescopes here and now, but for Euclid, whose goal is to image a third of the night sky and create the largest ever 3D map of the universe, it will lose area that it can image as pixels get knocked out by the radiation. This is an extension of a problem I've discussed before in this video up here, so check that out later if you'd like more information on all of this. By the end of its mission, Euclid could lose a few percent of its survey area if the particles and protons keep blasting it like this. A related problem is processing time on board the telescopes. You see, they usually take images, compress them in some way, and then either store them or send them to Earth, depending on the telescope. 
Radiation like this and other cosmic rays brighten the images and result in them taking longer to process and compress. If the next image comes in before the previous one is finished processing, then any unprocessed data is just lost as the onboard software starts to work on the new data. So excess solar activity causes us to lose data in this way too, and we get some incomplete images in these cases. The Hubble Space Telescope then has an additional problem with Aurora 2. It doesn't live far away like JWST and Euclid, but rather it orbits in a low Earth orbit, about 550 kilometers above Earth's surface. This is low enough that it feels friction from the Earth's atmosphere. This friction very slightly slows down the telescope over time, and when something in orbit slows down, the orbit loses altitude. This means that Hubble gradually moves towards the Earth over time, and if left alone, it would eventually crash back down to Earth in an uncontrolled way. Because of that, when astronauts have visited Hubble in the past on the space shuttle, they often gave Hubble a boost in altitude at the same time as fixing and upgrading its instruments. Hubble has no propellant or boosters on board, so it can't actually change its own orbit and has relied on the shuttle to boost it up in the past. Now, the last servicing of Hubble was in 2009 and no more are planned, so it's all downwards now for Hubble. When there's intense aurorae, this actually increased the drag that Hubble feels and caused it to lose height even faster. You can see that here. The orange line shows solar activity, and every time it increases, Hubble's altitude, shown in blue, drops faster and faster. The steep increases here are the boosts from Hubble servicing missions. For example, the first mission boosted it by 8 kilometers, and a second reboost in 1997 lifted it by 15 kilometers. As solar activity has increased, Hubble has lost 12 kilometers of altitude in the past year alone and it will eventually get so low that we're forced to crash it in a controlled way into the ocean. That would be a sad day, and it's only coming closer when these amazing light shows happen. So still enjoy the beauty of the northern and southern lights, but just spare a thought for all of our poor space telescopes at the same time too, because they are not enjoying it nearly as much as we are. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!